Hello MacWarriors, how is it going? Welcome to your daily dose of MacWarrior Online. Today I'm playing the Javelin. I'm playing the Javelin 11B because I wanted to have some fun with SRM2s and this is what we are doing today. So let's get into the Mac Lab. As you might tell, I've got four of them SRM2s. I've got a Guardian ECM and I've run, I'm running the XL Engine 255, which is the maximum engine. So the plan of this one here is to run around the battlefield like crazy, uh, not being seen by anybody and getting the kill. So this is a very nice striker. We are fast, we are mobile, we have DPS and we have a very nice burst damage potential here of 17 damage. <laughs> anyway, so I uh, got four tons of ammo here, got every slot used and a double heat sink. So again, the heat management is crazy. You can stay in the fights forever. But um, yeah, this is what, what you do. You just, uh, again, try to apply a lot of pressure to the enemy by using your speed and, and try to confuse the enemy. And uh, in the meantime, you're just uh, shooting out missiles like it's nothing. The skills for that one are completely tilted towards the weapons tree here because, again, I wanted to deal as much damage as possible. Uh, and I think in the Javelin, especially in this variant, you don't need anything else, really. So... Uh, I'm getting back to that in a second, but I, I think you don't need armor because it doesn't do that much. Uh, and mobility, okay, uh, I'm, I'm taking the speed tweak, but all that kinetic burst and anchor turn stuff, I think the, the javelin is so mobile already that you don't need anything else. Uh, but back to the weapons tree, uh, as you might tell, I, I am skipping a bit. Uh, I skip missile spread uh, because SRM2s are already, already very uh, tight, tightly clustered. Uh, but I am taking the missile rack here because this is a completely ammo dependent build and you don't have any energy weapons as backup. Uh, and therefore, missile rack is, I think, in my opinion, mandatory. So you, you want to have as many missiles as possible on this one. And missile rack helps with that. Um, again, the rest is just velocity, range, cooldown, and heat gen. Very straightforward, DPS oriented. My mech operation skill looks like that. Uh, I wanted to have the cool run and therefore I went down this path on the left, uh, taking the cool run here and these two down below. And I'm taking the left path because I wanted hill climb. So this javelin variant does not have jump jets and therefore hill climb comes in very handy. Improved gyros is not that interesting because you don't want to get hit anyway. And therefore uh, sh the screen shake reduction does <laughs> not too much. Uh, the sensor systems here are uh, tilted toward target, uh, target info gathering. This is what I wanted to have here. I wanted to target weak spots to bring enemies down. And I need that on, on medium and long range and therefore the target info gathering. Again, this is a striker. You want to secure the kills and you want to go in and hunt down already damaged enemies. And therefore you need to know where the weak spots are to apply the damage to these spots. Um, you have the DCM and you are fast, so you can go in uh, even behind the enemy lines and, and get the kills on the enemies that are trying to retreat and trying to get the second line there. Also, I am uh, taking one uh, point in the seismic sensor here because I think it's valuable. Uh, when you are in cover and you know what's going on behind that piece of cover, then that's that's good to have. It's not that, that much of range, only 100 meters, but I think this point is, is good here. And I'm having the second consumable slot. So, speaking of that, let's go back to the consumables. Uh, I'm taking an advanced UAV and an uh, artillery strike here because you don't need any cool shots. Again, the heat management is great and the tools uh, having the, the uh, advanced UAV and the artillery strike are great. And that's the build. I hope you had a, have a lot of fun in the two games that are coming. I definitely had. And uh, yeah, if you like it, don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel. But now it's time to hit the battlefield. Alright, first game of the day. We are playing the Frozen City, we are playing Domination and as a light mag with the missiles here, you have two purposes. First of all, you go for the kills. This is a very nice skirmisher and striker. If you see a damaged target, you go for it and you bring it down. And secondly, harassment. You just want to drive confusion into the enemy lines so that they can't fight back properly and your team has it very easy in a brawl. So as long as you can distract them, you are doing a good job. Now what I'm doing here is I'm watching the left flank and as soon as the hunchback is coming out there, I'm giving him a lot of missiles. I'm actually not afraid of him because he is targeting one of my friends and therefore I can easily shoot him in the center torso and he is open up already. So that was a bad, bad peeking attempt. He kind of, yeah, went in into our whole firing line and as soon as I see that his side torsos are open, I am going for the kill. So this is my first striking attempt. The hunchback wants to get back to second line but the constant fire of my SRMs and some LRMs from the teammates bring him down very, very easily. And 
And at this point, the enemy is trying to do a push and the skirmish is getting on. Problem is that I'm getting a cicada on my back and he is going to try for, to go for my legs. So at that point, I'm very, very scared that the cicada would bring me down and therefore I'm trying to retreat and I try to regroup with my team to hide behind them so that the cicada gets a lot of pressure from my teammates. And it should work out. My second target is the Warhammer here. I see that the center torso is open and I use my mobility to get there very quickly and bring him down from behind. Again, this is what you do. You just go in and secure the kills. There's no such thing as kill stealing in team game and therefore you shouldn't feel bad at all going in and just bring him down really fast. The sooner your teammates get out of the fight and can engage another one, the better it is. Now, what I am doing here is not really good because I'm getting too, too close to the cicada. I am getting a lot of team damage, or at least I'm risking it when I'm just facehugging the cicada. Just give your team some space to fight the enemy. Facehugging is never a good idea unless there's nobody around and you want to bring your missiles really, really close. But uh, in general, again, you need to, to open up some angles for your teammates to fire so that they can support you. Anyway, uh, we brought the cicada down. The next targets are some light mechs that are skirmishing around here. And as you can see, we've got a locust, we've got some javelins, and it's really tough to hit fast moving targets with the missiles. You need to get really close or have a very good aim and a good anticipation of where the enemy is going to move. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I am struggling with that a bit. I'm switching to the bigger target here, to the javelin, because he has larger legs than the locust and he was brought down by our whole team. And now it's just a matter of time. I try to get down here to intercept the locust, but he shoot me good and I went down up the other path. But as soon as he is lagged, it's just one shot to the torso and he is down. Next target is the javelin, which is already really cold and I was brought down by a friendly AC-20 here. Yeah, it also happens to me on the receiving end. You all know that I am usually the one that team kills the light max with, with an AC-20, but uh, this time I was on the receiving end. Anyway, we won the game. It was a nice skirmish. I got somehow five kills here, but again, this is the role of this mech. It is a very viable striker. I did uh, 320 damage, got five kills and two assists, and we are going over to the next round right now. So, second game. We are playing the Caustic Valley and we are playing Soul. And we decided not to leave our base and do the Nazca stuff. Instead, we decided to defend the base. And what happens now is the following. We have a disconnected player and there are two enemy light mechs that are trying to get that easy kill here. But they have no idea that we are still around. So they are probably assuming that we went to the center of the map. But what we can do now is we can just turn around and kill them very, very easily. Now, as you can see, we've got a lot of long-range missiles coming in already ready and my short range missiles on top of that and what I'm doing here I'm dropping an airstrike because I want these javelins dead as fast as possible I was not even afraid of the team kill because our body was disconnected anyway and I think the javelins were the higher priority so sorry dude you were the bait and uh, yeah we use you for killing these these light max here now it wasn't a fair fight because they only had two two light max here and we had the whole team there and uh, yeah we brought them down very very quickly now, our buddy here is, is dead, but we will never forget your sacrifice, dude. <laughs> All right, so the enemy team is closing in. And the two light mechs separated from, from, from the main force. And the main force is now pushing the base, as you can see. And we are getting a lot of missiles. And what I'm doing now is I just stay close to the assault mechs. I just try uh, to stay uh, to provide my ECM to them so that they won't be targeted by missiles that much. And they need to get to cover here. This this Warhawk, it needs to get to a good and safe spot. And therefore, I'm trying to stay as close as possible to him so that the enemy can target him that properly. And he is still getting shot by a lot of PPCs. But at least the missile range stopped. So that was Sorry. hopefully uh, a viable thing that I did here, a, a valuable thing to help out the team. So next, my next battle buddy is Target the Marauder acquired. to see here. He's kind of in the same spot. He can't go out there really because uh, again, there's a lot of enemies coming in. Now we see the Highlander in distress and as you can see, missiles are raining. And again, it's just that you have an ECM and you should provide it to your assault max when they are in distress. Always remember, your assault mechs are valuable assets in a push and you need to preserve their armor as much as possible. It's kind of on their own positioning themselves right, but if you can support them by doing so, then you should do it. Again, every point of armor later is so, so valuable and don't let them get uh, getting uh, ground, ground down by missiles. That is so, so important. I can't stress this enough. Missiles are very good for early damage against assault mechs and if you can provide some cover for them, then uh, yeah, you're doing a good job. Now what I see here is a Jenna, a very slow Jenna with five SRM-6s. 
And I'm so scared of him. I'm watching the left flank and uh, I gave my team some intel here. I used the voice comm to make them aware that there's a Jenna on the Whoa, left flank with five SRM6s. Uh, but I d did not want to engage him. I would lose the fight so, so badly against him because he has so much splat damage. Instead, what I'm doing here is a squirrel push. I'm trying to push now and, and dis distract the enemy so that my team could uh, follow up and yeah shoot him down. But as soon as I see that uh, the Vindicator is bound in, in a sk uh, skirmish with the Jenna here, I'm going for his back. I just wanted to help out my buddy because uh, the Jenna is not focusing me and now I can apply my missiles to his torso and bring him down very fast. So the combined effort here was very good. Now I see that there is a Zeus and I'm just pushing him back a bit. So I did not want to engage him directly because he knew that I would get up there and he was ready to shoot me with his LB-10. Instead I'm going to harass the enemies that are not facing me directly and I try to turn the faces around so that my team can push and do some damage to them. What you can do with that here is you can just probe the enemy firing line. You can go in, apply a bit of pressure and then retreat again to lure the enemy into your firing line. And this is what I'm doing here. I'm just shooting that Warhammer and that Ryan so that they would follow me hopefully and uh, are getting wrecked by my teammates this is a very viable strategy you can just yeah, pierce the enemy firing line with your missiles and and then try to retreat again and engage from another angle again uh, try to see as much confusion as possible with a light make especially in such a situation where the game is very static so this is what you can do you can just peek over over the ridges here and uh, yeah just harass the enemy and try to do something to help out your team. It doesn't even matter what you do, as long as you are a nuisance to the enemy. And as, as you can see, um, they were out of position here, the Warhammer and Orion, and my team is now pushing that flank. And we can very easily bring him down by just pushing that flank that is weak. Now, back to the other side, we have 9 kills already and now it's just uh, a matter of time until the enemies are dead. We bring down the Zeus and the Keith Fox is the next target. He is almost lagged already and I'm trying to bring him down that way as soon as I see that. So one shot to the leg, pin him down and then I'm in his back and we are killing him. That poor Kid Fox is in a very bad spot. We have another Kid Fox over there and uh, I'm doing kind of the same thing here. Uh, but. That one, it gets so much fire that we are just shooting the center torso and he is down there. So this was an interesting game. Uh, sometimes it's good to mix things up and do another strategy. The whole Nesca and going to the center thing is nice, but when you defend, it is also a very viable strategy here. 409 damage, got 3 kills, 7 assists, a bit of team damage, <laughs> but it's fine. In the end, we won the game and we were behind by one because we had that disconnect. That was your Javelin with SRM2s and ECM and I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help me out going down my path as a self-employed Mac Warrior, go down to the description. There's a link to my Patreon page. There you can get some rewards and can keep me going by a little bit of support with money. And I hope to see you on the battlefield, everybody. Goodbye.